Hi, in this video, we're going to do some guided exam question practice on the 2021 question that came up on stoichiometry calculations. As usual in this question, I am going to give multiple opportunities to pause at different stages when you are ready to uh, take on the next bit by yourself. It's very important that when you are ready and you really have to think about, can I do this, that you do pause the video and have a go by yourself. Before we begin, I'm going to uh, ask you to pause the video and read the blurb, the text here at the top. Um, so read it carefully, consider all the parts, pause the video, do that now. All right, so a reminder, it's 25 marks, you've got about 10 minutes to complete this question. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to point out a few things that I'm hoping that you noticed in here. The first of all you're told is that what an alloy is, it's a mixture of different elements, usually metals. So we, we have an alloy and it's a different mixture of different things. It then says uh, you have that much of it when 76.2 grams of an alloy and it's composed, this is very important, only, nothing else in here, only silver and copper. And it said when it's added to an excess of concentrated nitric acid, these two reactions took place. So look, we've got two reactions, one and two. The first one is the reaction of the silver. The second one is the reaction of the copper. So this is silver reactant with nitric acid. This is copper reactant with the nitric acid. Two reactions, one and two. All right, let's go back here. It says, uh, sorry, it says, so get these two reactions to appraise. Brown fumes of nitrogen oxide gas were released and 22.5 grams of copper uh, nitrate were formed. Uh, right, so what, we, uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to now have a look at what it's actually asking us to do and consider are we going to be able to do that. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to say to you is thinking about how can we find the mass of silver in the alloy. I want you to pause the video, have a think about how are you going to approach this. Pause the video and do that now. So have a good consideration over what, how exactly are you going to approach this problem. Okay, so now that you've had a consideration of this, uh, you need to think about, plan out the steps of your uh, calculation and your conversions um, before you start, okay? Uh, so if you're confident now that you have a good plan on how you're going to do this, you can pause the video and have a go at it. Do that now. If you haven't, if you don't really know where to begin here, you know, this is how much of an alloy you have. That's not really going to help us. The other number we have is this. 22.5 grams of copper nitrate were formed. This is the copper nitrate in the second equation. So now that I've given you that information, I want you to pause the video and think about how can you get to the amount of silver in the alloy from here. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, well, the first thing that we know is we're starting with uh, a mass. So we're starting with grams of this, uh, of this substance, CuNO3. Two. That's the only thing we really know in the beginning, and we do know the mass of the alloy. So what can we do from here? Well, the first thing we can do is if we have the mass of this grams, we can go to moles of this. Moles of CuNO3, 2. Okay, where do you think we're going to go after this? So pause the video and write this down if you didn't get it. Where should I go next? Pause the video, do that now. Okay, so hopefully you've said that from there, what we're going to do is we're going to go from moles of CuNO3 times 2. Hopefully you've said that the next step is, well, from there we can work to there. We can go, well, we know how many moles of Cu would have reacted with that. What would I do next? Pause the video and tell me what's on the next line. Okay, so on the next line, what I would have done is I would have gone from moles of Cu to grams of Cu. Now I was told at the very start that this alloy was made up only of silver and copper. So once I've worked out the grams of Cu, well, I know how much alloy I had. So what I can do is do the mass of the alloy, mass of the alloy, take away the mass or the grams of Cu, you could say the grams of Cu will give you, has to give you the grams of silver, AG. All right, so do the alloy, take away the copper, well, the rest has to be silver. So that is how we go about doing part one here, the first part of part one right here. So now that I've helped you lay out that plan, if you didn't already do it by yourself, now I've helped you along with that, pause the video and work to grams of silver. Do that now. 
All right, so hopefully you uh, followed. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I always use unit analysis. So we're going to go through this step by step. You can number them if you like. Not really that important. But remember, I'm going to set up my unit analysis. So that means I'm not putting any numbers down until I think about my unit. So I'm starting with grams of Cu NO3 2. All right. And what I'm doing is I'm taking a certain amount of grams and I'm converting to moles. So when I want to do that, I want to put my denominator with the same unit as I'm beginning with in my numerator. So grams of NO3, Cu NO3 2. And I want to end up with moles of this stuff of Cu NO3 2. Now I know my grams of will cancel with my grams there and leave me with moles, which is what I wanted after this first conversion. So now I can put my numbers in. I know that I formed 22.5 grams of that. And I know that for every one mole of that, well, I will have the mass of this many grams in one mole. So the mass of this is, well, is 64 grams for the copper. Then there is two times four, which is two times nitrogen, which is so plus two times 14 for the nitrogen, plus two times three oxygens, which is six oxygen. So six times 16 for the oxygen. So go ahead. Put that whole sum in your calculator now, and you should get moles of CuNO32. Okay, so when you put that in your calculator, hopefully 0.12 moles of CuNO3 brackets 2. All right, on to the next line. Let's now go from moles of that to moles of copper. Okay, so pause the video and go to the next line. If you haven't already done this all the way through, you should be able to do this. Finish it off. Come on, it's your turn. You need to take over. All right, so again, I'm setting it up. I'm beginning with moles of Cu NO3 2, and I'm converting that to mole. I make sure so I need to make sure I've got moles of Cu. NO3, 2 on the bottom, so they cancel, and I'm converting to moles of Cu on the top. That's what I want to be left with. So that's the second conversion here. Okay, so uh, I'm beginning with 0 0.12 from my first sum, and I'm going from moles of Cu to moles of, uh, so moles of Cu, NO3, 2 to moles of Cu. Now here I see from my equation here, this is a one to one ratio. So for every one mole of this, I have one mole of this. That means I have the same amount, 0 0.12 moles of Cu. Second conversion done. Now I want to go to grams of Cu. So grams of Cu, how will I do that on the next line now? So here I've got moles of Cu. And I want to go, so I'm converting to so make sure moles is on the bottom, Cu, and it cancels with those moles. And I want to go to grams of Cu. So I know that I'm beginning with 0 0.12 moles. And I know that for every one mole, well, what's uh, the mass of a mole of copper? It's 64. So it's 64 grams for every one mole. So I take that, I do uh, 0 0.12 times 64 over 1. You should have got 7.68 grams of Cu. That's my mass of Cu. And now I have this last little bit to consider. Okay. The mass of the alloy, take away the mass, grams of copper will give me grams of silver. So go ahead and pause the video and finish that now. All right. So this is what you should have done 76.2, because this is the mass of the alloy. Take away the 7.68, because this is the mass of copper. So this is the copper. And when you do that sum, you get 68.52, or it's not clear, five, five, two grams. And this is the mass of the silver that was in the alloy. So well done. If you got this far, you've got it right up to now. It then says there's a second part to part one. Look at this. It says, what is, what is, the, was the ratio by mass of silver to copper in the alloy? Ratio by mass. So most of us know what a ratio is. We want to go silver to copper like that. That's how we write a ratio, silver to copper. Now, ratio by mass. So let's start write down the mass of each of these. Well, we just worked it out up here that there's 
0.52 grams of the silver for every 7.68 grams of the copper. Now that's not the simplest version of a ratio here. So a ratio usually has a one in it. So it's something to one or it's, you know, one to something. So what we want to do is take the smallest number and turn it into a one. We do that by taking 7.68 because it's the smaller number. To turn it into a one, what I can do to this is just divide it by itself, 7.68. So divide 7.68 by 7.68, you get one. Now, what I want to do is I want to do the same to the other side. So I'm going to also divide this by 7.68. And what I really find out here is how many times more silver than I have do I have of copper? What's the ratio? So when you put that in, go ahead, stick it in your calculator, see what you get. You should have got 8.92. Now we can round that to nine. So the ratio here is nine to one. So nine parts silver to one part copper. That's what this means. All right, so that is the ratio of silver to copper. And that's how you do it. Your teacher may have showed you another way. And if it worked, fine. If not, and you think that this seems easy, well then use this way, okay? Now, the next uh, part says, what is the total volume of nitrogen oxide gas measured at STP and was released in these reactions. All right, so I want you guys to pause the video and think about how you're gonna do this. Pause the video and do that now. So you should be planning this out in your mind before you ever start. Now, the one place where I hope you've accounted for before you begin is that there are two reactions and they both produce nitrogen dioxide, okay? So you have to calculate the total volume produced. You know how much copper you have, you know how much uh, silver you have. How do you calculate the total volume of nitrogen dioxide gas? So that's what we're gonna do. You're gonna pause the video and you are going to do that for me now. Okay, so hopefully you're able to have a go at that by yourself. If you weren't already to have a, uh, able to have a go at that by yourself, let's help you plan it out. We need to do the two reactions. So we're going to do reaction one, and we're going to do reaction two. In reaction one, what conversions do we need to go? Well, we started with, we know how many grams of silver we have, grams of AG. Where do we go from there? Pause the video and write down what's the first conversion. Okay, so hopefully you said grams of AG. We need to find the moles of AG. When we have moles of AG, what do we need to do then? Pause the video. What's the next thing? Well, it's NO2 we want to find. So we can find then, you can use the equation to tell us how many moles of NO2 will be produced. And then what do we need to do? Pause the video and finish this up. Okay, once we have moles of NO2, the third conversion then, let's go from moles of NO2, we need to go to liters of NO2 at, or no, not at STP. All right, the second one is the same for copper. So you repeat this underneath the plan and repeat the plan for copper underneath this. And so pause the video and do that now, sorry. Okay, so what you should be doing in number two is you go from grams of Cu to moles of Cu. Go from moles of Cu to moles of NO2. And from moles of NO2, to liters of NO2 at STP. And then what we're gonna do is add these two values. Right, now that I've laid out the plan for you, pause the video and figure this one out. Pause the video, do that now. All right, so what you should have done is, we've just calculated the amount of grams in the question above. So this is here is what we need to use. We know the mass of, this is the mass of copper, this is the mass of silver. Easy after that, guys. You will need your equations too. So I'm just going to allow you to pause the screen on that to go ahead and finish this off. Now, I'm just going to rub out, give you clearer equations again. Pause the video, finish this off. All right, so hopefully what you did was this. Let's start with grams of silver, grams of AG. And we want to go from grams of AG to moles of AG. G, AG to moles of AG. Okay, and that'll give us an answer in mole of AG. 
because they cancel there. Okay. What we're then going to do is take those moles of AG and we're going to do our second conversion where we go from moles of AG to moles of NO2. Okay. So our answer then would be in moles of NO2. some amount of moles of NO2. And then from moles of NO2, we're going to go, that's a gas. So then we can go from moles NO2 to liters of NO2 and at STP. All right. So if you weren't sure how to do that, I've laid this out for you. Pause the video and go and put the numbers in and finish this off and then do the same for copper. All right. So this is what we should have done. We had a certain amount of grams of silver. What was it? Well, we just worked out above here that it was 68.52. What do we know then? The conversion factor for every one mole of silver, it has 108 grams of silver per one mole. How do I know that? I went to my periodic table, found the mass number, uh, or the molar mass, which is 108 grams for every one mole. That's all I've said here. Okay. So when I put down my calculator, I'm going to get moles of AG. So let's go ahead and do that. 68.52, 68.52 times by 1 over 108. 1 over 108. And that gives me 0.634 moles of silver. Then I want to go convert to moles of NO2. So let's go to my balanced equation and look at the reaction with silver. I know that for every one AG, I produce one NO2. So it's one to one ratio. So that's easy. One to one ratio. I don't even need to put that in my calculator because that's just times by one over one. I'm going to get the same number of moles, 0 0.634. If you don't believe me, check it. Okay. Now that we know that, we can go to liters. Okay. Uh, so what do we know about liters of a gas at STP? Pause the video, write the conversion factor in and finish it up. But what you should know is that for every one mole of any gas at STP, it's going to give you a volume of 22.4 liters. So that's what we're going to do. Take that and times it by 22.4 over one. Okay, so that first reaction produced for me 14, sorry, 14.2 liters of NO2. Let's now do the second equation. The exact same grams of Cu times by, actually, do you know what? Why am I doing this? You pause the video and you finish this off now. Do that now. Okay, so start with grams of CO2 and we're going from grams of C, sorry, grams of Cu, grams of Cu uh, to mole of Cu equals. All right, let's do that first of all. So we had 7.68 grams of copper from up here. Look, that's how much copper we had. And we know that for every one mole of copper, go to your periodic table, 64 grams of copper. So let's find out how many moles we had. 7.68 times by 1 over 64. It gives me 0.12 moles. 0.12 mole of Cu. And from there, I want to go from moles of Cu to moles of NO2. Moles of Cu to mole of NO2. Go back to my equation. Let's look at the ratio. One copper gives two NO2s. Go back to my equation. One mole of copper, two moles of NO2. So my mole of Cu cancels there and I get 0 0.24 mole of NO2 as my answer. And then lastly, I want to know how many liters of NO2 is that. So times by, I want to go from mole of NO2, cancels there, to liters of NO2 at STP. It's the same as before. For every one mole, there's 22.4 liters of that gas. So it's 0.24 times by 22.4 gives me 5.376 liters. 
5.376 liters. Right, so the total volume of gas, well, I have this produced from the first equation, this produced from the second equation, the total is obviously these two added together. So let's add them up, you get 14.2 extra gives me 19.576 liters equals the total volume at STP. If you got that by yourself, very well done. If you're very close to it, it could be around an issue and you've probably done it right. If you're not in that ballpark, then you may not have done it right. So I'm just going to scroll up, leave the market scheme here so that you guys can have a look at it for yourselves. Okay, you see what they've done. They've rounded to 19.6. We'll be just fine. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, uh, so yeah. Well done. If you have got that right, uh, let me just check. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So hopefully, guys, you found that uh, you found that question okay. Um, it is about planning out the sequences and the steps that you have to follow and being able to look at a question and go, what do they want me to do? What's the direction? Where do I need to go? That's the big thing you need to develop, and hopefully after practice in several of these questions that's starting to develop now. Thanks to everyone who's leaving likes on the videos, guys. It's really helping people to find the videos. Uh, there's more people just from, than people from my school who are finding them now, which is good uh, because uh, I'm hearing from people that it's really helping them. So thank you for that. Keep liking if you can, and we'll see you in the next video.